Residents of modern megacities are accustomed to the uninterrupted water supply to their apartments. In such comfortable conditions, sometimes a false feeling is created that this important source of life is easily accessible to everyone. However, there are many places on the planet where people cannot physically afford to have an unlimited supply of clean water. One of such places is the arid Sahara Desert. Today, water is extracted there with the help of special nets. What are these nets and how does this technology work? What natural phenomena inspired scientists to come up with a simple but effective solution to the problem? Find out about it in today's video. The slopes of Mount Boutmesgida, located on the very edge of the Sahara, are one of the driest regions of Morocco. Residents of settlements located there have long suffered from severe water shortages due to low rainfall and depletion of groundwater. More than 60% of people in the region live without running water in their homes. To get water, local women have to walk 5 kilometers to open wells every day. To protect themselves from the heat, they have to leave before sunrise and girls who are also involved in this hard work skip school and easily become victims of violence. Due to overuse, drought, and climate change, a drop in the water table has become inevitable. This issue affects the entire country. Over the past 60 years, water levels in Morocco have fallen by a factor of 3 from 1,500 cubic meters per person in the 1960s to around 500 cubic meters today. In the area of mountain Boots Megida, almost half of the population sold their homes, left rural life, and moved to the cities. The situation with the water supply of the region required an urgent solution, and it was found thanks to a technology called Cloud Fisher, developed by industrial designer Peter Trautwein, who volunteers with the German Water Foundation. Technology has made it possible to collect drinking water from fog and supply it to water-scarce populations in drylands. The technology for harvesting water from the fog was developed back in the 70s through the 80s of the last century, but it has only become widespread in the last decade. In 2006, the Dar Sihaman Moroccan non-governmental project began research on climate and water supply in the Mount Bouzmagida region. In 2014, the world's largest fog harvesting machine was built and a year later put into operation using the patented cloud fissure technology. Here, at an altitude of 1,200 meters, mist catchers collect about 6,000 liters of water per day. But how is it possible to extract so much moisture from the desert air? The installations are located on the path of movement of moist oceanic air. This area of Morocco is located near the Atlantic coast. Air masses that form over the ocean are saturated with moisture and upon falling on land form a fog that stays here six months a year. It enters the cloud fissure nets. The system itself is very simple. The gigantic 600 square meter installation consists of a fine mesh plastic net with triangular holes stretched over a vertical steel frame. The net is fixed with rubber tensioners, which also attach it to the reservoir. These tensioners keep the net taut and serve as a kind of shock absorber, softening strong gusts of wind. Nets are placed in such a way that they are located perpendicular to the direction of the wind in order to ensure the maximum amount of water is collected. The water vapor deposited on the fine mesh condenses and flows down into a special reservoir below. The principle of operation of nets is, so to say, copied by the authors from nature itself. A similar technology is used by pines and sequoias in redwoods, on whose needles the fog condenses into water, thus compensating for the lack of precipitation. There is also a range of creatures that trap moisture from the air in the driest conditions, from beetles in the Namib Desert to lizards in the Australian outback. In a typical year, the nets harvest about 22 liters of water per square meter from the fog. And in the period from November to February, the volume of water harvested via this means reaches 60 liters per square meter. Such a unit can be quickly assembled and installed, and it is simple to maintain, making it an ideal solution to the problem of water scarcity in impoverished areas, where resources and technical capabilities are, to put it mildly, limited. A pilot project to turn fog into water is already providing clear drinking water to five villages with about 500 people. 
Pre-filtered from harmful impurities, water flows directly into the house. All you have to do is to open the tap. Indeed, people have to pay about 40 cents per ton for such conveniences. But now, rural residents have access to fresh, clean drinking water that is piped into their homes, which means that women as well as girls who are expected to fetch water now have an opportunity to do something more productive. Not without challenges in operation, the main problem of water-bearing pipelines is the speed of the wind, which can reach 110 km per hour in the Mount Buzmagida area. It can be solved only by improving the design of nets as a whole. Scientists concerned with this task have identified three main parameters that determine the efficiency of collecting tiny air droplets. The size of the fibers in the nets, the size of the holes between the nets, and the material from which the fibers are made. So the technology continues to improve and engineers are working on creating models that are much more resistant to wind load. But the main task is to increase the amount of water extracted from the fog. The Dar Sihamad project has received 15 awards, nominations and prizes since 2013 for achievements in the field of harvesting water from fog. The organization planned to expand the project by 12 new villages and was also preparing to cover its activities in another area of the country. The anti-atlas located on the border with the Sahara in Morocco and also to launch a project for the use of wastewater in peasant farms. But there has been no official information about how things are going with the implementation of these intentions. Most likely, the reason for curtailing activity is a lack of funding. Since the program needs to be sponsored, its expansion and the use of technical improvements are directly dependent on grants and donors. Let's hope that projects aimed at providing water to those who need it most do not evaporate in a series of other global problems.